Hello there, you're watching VLAN Miniatures. In this episode, I'm going to continue with my Turnip 28 project, and I'm going to make some infantry miniatures. These heads and torsos are designed by Saint Decent on Instagram, uh, and I will link their account below. Make sure to check out all of their cool stuff. You can print these yourself from uh, the Turnip 28 Patreon. I'm not yet sure what design I want to go with for uh, these uh, turnip infantry miniatures. Uh, so for the first one I'm going to build, I'm just going to build it as it's supposed to be, uh, using the Perry miniatures Napoleonic Age uh, bits. I actually don't have this entire set of the Napoleonic era uh, troops, so I will need to find another arm. However, I do have this uh, World of Roses infantry miniatures from Perry Miniatures, so they are the same scale. That new arm worked nicely. So now I'm just applying a little bit of liquid green stuff, because I think it's very hard to see what's going on with this uh, semi-transparent uh, 3D printing resin that's used here, and also uh, the 3D print lines. I have not sanded this piece, so you can still see the lines uh, here and there. But stippling the surface with uh, liquid green stuff gives it another texture instead, which I think is much nicer. It's going to be much more like rusted metal. I made another one using the arms and legs from the War of the Roses Perry miniatures instead of the Napoleonic ones. Uh, and it's not as nice, but it works. Now that I've used a couple of the Perry miniatures, uh, miniatures to make my infantry miniatures, I'm going to try something else. And the first one is going to be these uh, sneaky snuffers, because they are smaller than other Game Workshop miniatures, because they are little goblin dudes. And they should be small. So maybe uh, they scale well with the turnip torsos. Another reason why I chose these is that they have these uh, things on their back, which are full of mushrooms. But of course, I could fill them with root vegetables instead, which might look very cool. So I'm going to make two different ones, I think, in two different ways. Uh, the first one, I will chop uh, into pieces and use the entire turnip uh, torso without altering it. I think this torso is going to be fitting for these uh, sneaky snifflers. Okay, so even though they scale pretty well, the legs are very short <laughs> for this torso, uh, so it looks a little bit funny. So I was trying to figure out what to do with the backpack, uh, because it doesn't really fit anymore when I took it apart from the, uh, yeah, from the original body, uh, and the angle is also off. However, if I lift it a little bit up and put it over the head, that might be funny. Uh, that might be a nice look for this turnip dude. I need to trim a little bit more off, but I think it's going to work. So the original arms aren't going to fit that well anymore because the cape they have, so I will have to do a lot of trimming. Uh, so for this one instead, I think I'm going to use this uh, rifle from the Perry Miniatures kit. I think these arms worked quite well with, uh, with the legs, but for uh, the next one, let's try to keep this one as much of the original as possible, so I'm just going to give it a head swap. I think this one too, with the bent nose, uh, looks kind of goblin-y, which is going to make it work well with the body. The sneaky snufflers are supposed to have this uh, little animal with them, this little uh, truffle-smelling squig. And I think this would be appropriate for Turnip 28, but I'm not going to give it the squig. Uh, instead, I'm going to make something with this lumpy looking Leica ball. I think this is more appropriate creature for uh, my Turnip 28 project. Alright, I think that worked out quite well. Of course, I need to fill some areas with the green stuff, but yeah, this was actually a quite good fit. And this strange creature was fun too. I really like the shape of these uh, Leica balls, but yeah, I think I need to add some more bits to it, maybe some green stuff, maybe give it an eye somewhere, uh, or a nose. I don't know. Uh, anyway, I filled the uh, 
backs of these or like their spider backpacks with just lumps of green stuff because I think that's more fitting than the mushrooms that they were supposed to have. So I'm just going to paint these in some earthy tones to be like some type of roots that they have. The next kit I want to try out is the Hobbit Goblins. Here I already have some uh, without faces because I've used their faces for my Dark Mechanicum army, uh, which is good because I'm going to use the heads and torsos that I have <coughs> lying here. So to start, I'm going to try to merge these two. I think I'm just going to try to uh, give this one the legs and the arms from uh, the Hobbit Goblin and see if it's uh, See if it works out cleanly. This actually worked out pretty well, I think. I'm going to give it the parry rifle instead of the knife. I think that's going to be more fun. For the second one, I'm just going to do a head swap, uh, giving it this head with the, with the big hat. This head is already uh, without the body, actually. It's the only file that's only a head. So if you're looking for a head swap option or a different head option, this is a good choice. And the hat is really nice. All right, that's the turnip hobbit goblins. They turn out quite nice, I think. The next kit I want to try out is the new Age of Sigmar zombies. These are a lot smaller than the average Games Workshop miniature, uh, so I think they will look nice together with the other kit bashes I've done so far. The zombies have a lot of roots uh, growing out of them, and I think that's going to be very fitting. I think I'll start with, the, with this one, the one that's leaning forward. I haven't built any with the long nose yet, so I'm going to use this one. One thing I don't particularly like with the zombie uh, kit is that their feet are really big, or at least uh, these shoes. I mean, the feet on this one is fine, but uh, this one needs a little bit of trimming. So I'm just going to uh, trim it down a little bit. I'm going to cut some of these grass tufts uh, into smaller pieces and place them around on the back of the miniature to add some extra detail. I think that's going to look nice with some extra vegetation along with the twig. I also want to make one with this nice looking dress. I think that's going to be fun to paint. Maybe I want this one to have a rifle. Um, but I see now that the parry arms don't scale that well with the... Games Workshop legs or these uh, zombie legs, even though they are long and thin, they the arms look really short when I do this. So the arms that are supposed to go with this body are super skinny, but uh, much longer. So maybe I can splice them. Maybe I can uh, put these arms together with the rifle. All right, that's pretty good for the zombies. Uh, I actually think these two are my favorite ones so far. So yeah, uh, definitely going to use more zombies for my turnip miniatures. And yeah, I actually made this one uh, a little while ago, which is actually why I decided to try out these different kits, because with this one, I, I tried out the zombie legs first. Uh, and yeah, you can see a zombie arm there as well. So this one is like a mix of the zombie, uh, zombie kit and the Napoleonic uh, parry miniatures. So the same as these guys. The next miniatures I want to try out are the Blood Bowl Nurgle team. The Nurgle Blood Bowl miniatures are bigger than the ones I've used so far. But I have a couple of turnip torsos printed at the bigger scale, which I can use. I think these might work quite well together. I'm removing the horn and the trim from the shoulder pad to make it look a little bit more like the armor of the torso. The second arm that's supposed to go with these legs uh, is this one. And yeah, it's a little bit weird and it's uh, kind of merging with a uh, part of the torso. But then I thought that maybe I could glue it on there, uh, the whole thing and have like a big sort of lump and maybe add some uh, twigs or roots growing out of it, like uh, like on these ones. This blob here is actually the neck from the original miniature, 
And I was thinking about just leaving it as it is, uh, just having it as like a lump or a boil or something. But then I thought that maybe it could actually be uh, another neck and give this one the same affliction as my turnip troll by giving it the second uh, smaller head. 3D printing resin is really hard and really brittle, so it's, uh, it's not that easy to kit bash with it. I think I can get away with using glue and grass tufts in the seams without having to do much green stuffing later. I think zombies and Nurgle bits uh, would go quite well together to make like a army or regiment because these two match quite nicely. There are so many more kits that I want to try with these uh, torsos but I think I'm just going to do one more for this episode. And the one that I found is this one. I was a little bit skeptical at first, but I think this is going to work out nicely. I think this has worked quite well so far. I gave her the leftover hammer from the zombie instead of the bolt gun, because I think that's a little bit more appropriate in this case. Right now it looks a little bit like a knight, but I think I want to add some uh, 40k or sci-fi elements, making it a little bit more steampunk. I really like attaching little details like this, because it just adds so much character to the miniature. And to really tie her into the setting, I'm going to add some tufts around the back here. Uh, this will also help to uh, hide some uh, mistakes that were made. I was planning to fill this one up with the uh, root vegetables and have it on the top of the spear or the banner, but I think this thing is too big, so instead I'm going to use it for something else. Uh, maybe have a turnip person dragging it along the ground or something, so yeah. So this knight ended up with a big sword and a stick instead. Comparing this one to the first turnip, it's quite a lot larger, even though they actually have uh, quite similar sized bodies. This one's a little bit bigger, but the height is about the same, so that's a bit funny. Uh, these two beside each other is kind of like a human and a space marine, so I wonder if they have steam-powered space marines in the turnip universe. Anyway, that was the last one I'm going to build in this episode, and as you can see I managed to build quite a few, 11 characters actually. Uh, these two with the peri miniatures, which are quite a lot smaller than the rest. So this might be what I go for, for the infantry, to have a little bit of scale variation. However, I really like uh, these ones, the ones that are from the zombie uh, kit. And they too are quite a lot larger, but they will work as the same type of unit, so I can combine them a bit. Rebecca really liked these ones, so I'm going to make a small group of them for her to paint. And these ones were really fun, so I want to experiment more with the uh, goblins. Uh, and I also think I will be able to do something very, very similar with Skaven. And I have quite a lot of the standard size Skaven miniatures, so I'll try that uh, in an upcoming episode. And then we have the experimental ones, which uh, I actually think turned out quite cool. They are of course the least turnip 28 looking miniatures, but they have quite a lot of characters, so I like them. Check out my Instagram and Facebook if you want to see more pictures of my miniatures. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and I will see you all in the next episode.